Why did God use a lion? There is a reason behind why God used these two animals where he identifies himself with those two animals. God identifies himself with two animals in the scripture and both the animals are kings in their domain. In their kingdom, they are their kings. One is written here, lion. He's the king of the jungle. And there's another animal that God relates himself to. What do you think it is? Huh? Lamb. Every time the animal, every time the, 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 the lion sees the elephant, there is something that is going across his mind. There is some, what did he say? He's saying, that's my lunch. That's my next meal. He is going to sustain me and he's going to sustain my cubs. He's going to sustain my family and he's going to be for a season. When he's looking at it, he just, man, I'm just, I'm just going to lick you up right now. I'm just going to bite into you. By the way, can you tell me the size of the stomach of an elephant? And compare it with the size and the stomach of an ele- or, 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 size on the stomach of a lion compared to the size and stomach of an elephant. Who stands a chance here? Yet he's got a small stomach, but look at his head. I can swallow you. I'm going to beat, I'm going to eat into you. You are my next meal. You're coming, you're a steak right on my table. You know why? Because he has the attitude. Stay tuned for the latest message from Pastor Kevin Anthony. Hallelujah. To God be the price. Anybody ready to receive God's word? Amen. Anybody ready to receive God's word? Then open the Bibles to, uh, to the book of Joel. To the book of Joel. Chapter 2. Go to the book of Joel. Chapter 2. Verse number 25. Joel chapter 2, verse number 25. This is a prophetic word I want to declare over you. This is a prophetic word I want to declare. It's not the word for tonight. It's not the message for tonight, but this is the word for now. There is something called logos. And there is something called rema. Rema means word for now. Word for today. Just receive this word. With a heart of belief. Let's read together. He says, I will restore. Are you with me? He says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. He says, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. You're going to ask God for grace that you would restore. If you have lost years, God will restore it back. If you have lost year, you will, he will restore it back. Amen. If you have lost months, he will restore it back. Amen. If you have lost month, he will restore it back. Amen. If you have lost weeks, he will restore it back. Amen. If you have lost a week, he will restore it back. Amen. If you have lost days, he will restore it back. Amen. If you have lost a day, he will restore it back. Amen. If you have lost minutes, he will restore back. Amen. If you have lost a minute, he will restore back. Amen. If you have lost seconds, he will restore back. Amen. And let it reduce down to furthermore. If you lost a second, he will restore it back. Amen. He said you will pray over the sick and they will be healed. Amen. There is no full stop. He further goes to say, they will recover. That's restoration. He says, and they shall recover. That's in, uh, uh, that's in the gospel according to Mark 16. Go home and check it out. Are you with me? Listen, don't take this word in your ears. Let it enter your spirit, man. Can I clarify a little bit more? When I say don't take it in your ears, means what? What does it mean? Please, please. Oh, Pastor, please. don't take it again. Where do I take it? Hold a minute. When you have your meal, when you have your meal, when you finish chewing it, when you've enjoyed the flavor, you've enjoyed the seasoning, you enjoyed everything, you enjoyed the taste, you enjoyed the meat or whatever that you had. You once you finished enjoying it, you don't spit it out. You take it in. 
Come on, guys. You take it inside. The same thing with the word. Don't take it here and leave it. No, no. Let it seep inside. Into your spirit, man. Let it become part of your flesh. Let's let it become part of your being. Amen. Are you with me? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let me ask one more thing. Has anybody been to a courtroom? Into a courtroom where you are facing a judge or face, uh, not facing, you've gone to a courtroom. Have you been to a courtroom? Yeah, where the judge is there. Yeah, the witness stand and all that stuff. People are there. Can you tell me, when, when the judge is seated in that place, when the judge is seated in that place, uh, <clears throat> what is the ambience? He's quiet? Sure. Is that all? Only just quiet? Respect? Okay, that's quiet. What else is happening? Huh? Oh, there is tension. Okay. What else is happening? Oh, there is argument or cases. Apart from that, what is happening? While the argument is happening, the people who are up front here, uh, with the advocate or whatever, who is that? What is happening to the general public? What are they doing? Huh? They're doing what? They're into it. In, they're inquiring. No, I'm talking about the general public. The, 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 the lawyers are battling it out. What's happening to the people who are seated in the, in the audience? What is happening? Okay, what else they are doing? Apart from listening, what are they? Focus. And what else they are doing? Huh, sorry? Uh, I like that word. Being reverence to the... How do you pay reverence to the judge? I like that word, reverence. You really use a little heavy word, reverence. I would like to use in a more layman's language, respect. Reverence is... It's, it's a right word. Apart, what do you mean by that you pay reverence? What happens? What did you say? Oh, you said interfere. Apart from that. Interfere, interrupt. Ah, come talk, talk, talk. Jodh me bolo, jodh me bolo. Ah, when you're in the, in the presence of a judge, you don't do this. When you're in the presence of the judge, you're not, you're not chewing gum either. When you're in the presence of the judge, you're not cracking chips. You're not, come on, when you're in the presence of the judge, there is no room to touch this. Very urgent call, my boss is calling. No, no, no. There is no room for this. One more thing. When the judge, when the court is in session, when there is order, yes. What is the definition of order? Yes, pin drop silence, good. There's something more. When the judge is, yes, discipline, order. When the judge is seated and he is listening, when the court is in session, nobody has the courage to get up and go out. You better be seated. If a bladder is bursting, you better be seated. You should have done the stuff outside and come before. Why? 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 Why do you think all these things are happening? Quiet, silence, order. Why? That word, what did he say? Respect. Are they afraid of the guy that he's going to whack? No, he's not going to whack. It is for what he's wearing. For who he is. Are you with me? It is sheer out of respect that one does. To who? The judge for the title that he's having. Now I'm thinking, if, if we pay so much of respect or reverence, whatever you may call it, to an earthly judge, that you are not allowed to open something and drink, you're not allowed to open a packet and you're not allowed to chew gum, you're not, you will not do it. That's why I asked you, how many people have gone inside and sat through a session? In this session, you can't even talk. You're just looking there. You better behave yourself. Why? If you, because judge is in a situation. He says, can you get up and get out of this place? He can throw you out. Now my question is, we're sitting in the presence of the judge of judge. Are you with me? Do you think God is in his judgment seat? The right judge? The Bible talks about he's a righteous judge. Not an unjust, but a just one. Now when he's speaking, when his presence is here, when his present is there, now if I'm going to give that kind of reverence to a human being, how about him? I'm not pushing in legalism, please understand. I'm pushing in respect. I'm pushing in reverence for the Lord. Are you with me? Listen, every time, 
that you are seated in the presence of God. Listen, receive the word with meekness. Receive the word with joy. Listen, if you know that if you are going to excuse yourself while the word is going on, excuse yourself before the word starts. Guys, are you with me? Try doing it out when the court is in session and see what happens. You may go, you will not be able to come in. <laughs> are you with me? I pray that you would begin to give reverence to God's word when he's speaking. When the court, listen, the church is in session. Come on guys, the meeting is in session and we have an amazing lawyer and when he speaks, when he fights, he always wins and his name is Jesus. Listen, look at somebody and say, I've got an amazing lawyer. Come on, bless somebody. Can we make that word lawyer a little more heavier? Tell I've got an amazing advocate. And listen, Tell the same neighbor, he has a track record. He has never lost a case. Come on, tell somebody around here, say, I have a track record. He has a track record. His track record says he's never lost a case. My advocate has not lost a case. Come on, bless behind somebody and say, my advocate has not lost a case. Push it further. He never will lose a case. Are you with me? Well, I would encourage you. If you have a weak bladder, come, I'll pray for you. If you have a weak bladder, is anybody wearing pamper in this place? That's called a weak pamper. That's called a weak bladder. Thank God nobody has. That means you can still stay. If you feel this room is cold, put the AC off. You have full permission to break that thing. Let it burn over there. Let it blow off. You have full permission from your pastor. Do whatever you want to do. But listen, when you're seated, sit, say, God, you're here. And I'm just excited. I'm so glad. I'm so full of joy that you're speaking to me. Speak to me, speak to me. Listen, I'll tell you, you make great, great progress in your spiritual life. Sit down as children and say, God, I'm so happy. I'm so full of joy. I want to listen to your word. I'm not moving out of this place unless you speak to me. Hallelujah. May I ask you to open your Bibles to... Uh, 3 John, 3 John, verse number 2. 3 John, verse number 2. I believe there is an anointing for healing. We don't, a specific kind of anointing. Can I push it a little further? If somebody is suffering, pick up a common, common ailment. Pick up a common ailment. You pick up a common ailment. A common ailment. You pick up. Sickness. How complicated you guys are, man. I asked you a simple question. How complicated you guys are. Say fever. Common flu. Common flu. All right. That's common, right? We understand common flu. Now, common flu, you don't need to see a doctor these days, by the way. You don't need to see a doctor. Let's push it a little further. Somebody's suffering from tuberculosis. Somebody suffering from tuberculosis, he goes to the doctor. Now, who is he going to see? Is he going to see a cancer specialist or tuberculosis specialist? Please talk to me. If the ailment is so and so, he is going for a specific treatment to a specific doctor who specializes in that, right? You will not go him to say, I want to go to a general practitioner. No, he is going to go to somebody who is specific because he carries that specific anointing or in medical terms, or he's specialized in that thing. He's a, he has the expertise. He's not going to go to a cancer specialist. He's not going to somebody who is specialized in, ca in, in, in cardiology. He's going to go to who? Tuberculosis specialist and gets his treatment, right? Specific anointing for specific health. Come on, guys. There is a specific anointing here now. An anointing for healing for very something very specific. You'll get to know. When I release my title for tonight, you'll get to know what is the thing. But let's go to John. The epistle of John, verse number two. Third John, the third epistle, the third letter, verse number two. 
probably I might just able to do just a foundation of tonight's word. I might not, I'm not have the time to really go into it. But just, it's good enough. I'll tell you, good enough to lay the foundation. I want to really lay it very well. And I want you to go home with this uh, foundation set correctly. See what the Bible says. Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Let's read one more time. Yeah? He says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper. That word prosper is not just limited to money. That word is not limited to wealth. That word prosper is not limited to gold and the silver and the properties and the cars. No, it is not. It is just part of it. That word prosper is saying, I wish above all things that you would do well. You would be successful. You would be, do, you would be doing well in life. It's not talking about, listen, somebody could be very prosperous in terms of wealth, but could be suffering in his emotional life. Are you with me? He could be doing very well in his wealth, but when it comes to, when it comes to his mental life, he's very stingy. There is an issue. Come on guys, am I making some sense? He, one could be very prosperous, very, very prosperous in his, in his wealth and in his business or his career, but could be having issues when it comes to doing well in his marriage. So prosperity that he's talking about is that you do well in every area of your life. Are you with me church? Then he says, and you be in good health. It's the same thing applies. The health is not just a physical health. Somebody could be very healthy, but could have financial issues. Somebody could be very healthy financially, but could have emotional issues. Break down any minute. Your heart is always pounding. It could be a millionaire, billionaire, whatever, lots of, but the heart is too small. Can't handle it. Are you, are you there with me? If you only think that poor people have sleepless nights because there's no food on the table, then let's talk about some millionaires, billionaires also who have sleepless nights because they just don't know who's going to break into that. Come on guys, talk to me man. If you know what I'm saying or if you don't know what I'm saying, then I would encourage you, uh, Google, Google the richest man in India. Don't tell his name. I don't need to know his name. You know his name. The richest man in India. He doesn't step out his house. He is the richest man in India. The richest man. He doesn't step out of his house without Z security. If he takes one journey in one way, he'll never take the same journey next day. Everything is cordoned off. There is high level security even to reach out to him. Not only him, his wife. Not only his wife, even his children. Because there's constant fear somebody might just attack him. There's constant fear for, for there's death threats and there's constant fear in and around. Listen, richest man has also a lot of richest problems also. So the Bible says, I wish above all things that you would prosper, that you would do well, you would be very successful. See, one could be very successful in his career. One could be very successful in his office, in, his, in, in, in managing his office or managing his business, could, but could be a very unsuccessful father. Come on, guys. Could be a very unsuccessful dad, unsuccessful mother. Could be very successful here. I, I know some friends. I knew some friends who are the, 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 the colleagues. They were colleagues in our trade. And the lady was extremely successful. If you only mention the name, people would stand up. Oh, this one. She's like epitomes. Like that's the way kind of she was known in the market. But if you look at her children that she raised up, disaster. Absolute disaster. Absolute disaster. She had no control over any of the child. She had no control over the son. Even today, the son is unmarried and he's into heavy drugs. He's a burden to his old father. She's passed away. Now he's a real burden to his own father. So much so he wants to put the house on sale and eat up all the money. That's what he did with the other stuff. So when you, when you look at the graph of this lady and her success in the career part of it, it's amazing. Nobody could touch her. Nobody could touch her. That's so successful. But when it came to the house, she had no control over what was happening in the house. Are you with me? But my emphasis is on the last one. Because it's the last one that triggers the first two. He says, even as your soul prospers, 
even as your soul prospereth by the way what is soul what is soul what is soul we have read this word right we 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 have read this word an umpteen number of times we have prayed about it we have said amen a thousand times every time the word has come at least above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul pro- amen yes hold a minute let's break it up what do you mean by soul man consists of how many faculty by the way man consists of how many faculty he is made up of how many faculties which are the which are this sorry sorry again spirit soul and body or body soul spirit is it so spirit soul body or body soul spirit i'll say it one more time is it spirit soul body or body soul spirit the last one second one you said man consists of three it is spirit soul body how do you know I mean, you said it correct how do you know how do you know how do you know that spirit soul body where is it written is it in the bible is it written in the bible i challenge you show me show me you said uh, a, a, a man consists of three faculties is correct okay fine spirit soul body show me where it is in the bible or what makes you say that it is spirit soul body spirit soul i want a scripture you said it is there so how do you back it up no answer is wrong that's why it's called grace everybody passed it's in the bible by the way did i give this church an assignment last week seriously this is grace stretched too far because i was so firm and i was so hard with my guys in dubai i gave them an assignment last week Did I talk about Jacob here last week? No wonder. No wonder. That's why you all missed it because I did not finish last year's last week's message here in Abu Dhabi. But I have to finish this because I believe God is on this right now. Determination I didn't even finish half in Abu Dhabi. Not even half. I didn't even touch half. We'll do it some other time. I've given an assignment today. I'll give you guys an assignment. Find out in the Bible where it talks about spirit, soul, body. And it's in the book of the... Don't read it now. Don't find out now. Don't Google it now. Don't... I don't need the answer. Listen, read five chapters that are there in 1 Thessalonians. Only five. Look at me. Only five chapters. Listen. It's in the book of Thessalonians. And the Bible talks about man consists of spirit, soul, and body. Okay. How did God make man? In his image and his likeness. what was god made up of or what is god made up of spirit right so god is spirit he made man am i oh, is it okay for me to teach you a little bit a little bit very simple that you understand what is the meaning of soul because when you get this right you will get the other two right automatically because the bible says when our soul prospers everything around us begins to prosper everything around us that connects to us is connected to us every other faculty will be healthy See you cannot get the first two unless you fulfill the number 3 part. Come on guys, are you with me? You can never omit the soul part and say God I want to prosper. You and I could be singing and fasting for the rest of our lives now to eternity God I'm going to prosper. I want to be in divine health without fulfilling the soul prosperity. Is not going to go. Are you with me? The key to the first one is in is soul prospering. So When God made man, he made in his image and likeness. That means God is spirit and made man in his likeness, like spirit. That's why the man is spirit. Man is spirit and that spirit has a soul. And that soul has a body. That's why you have the physical body. Come on guys. Man is spirit. Spirit has a soul. and soul is trapped in a body are you with me and soul is nothing else in plain layman's language in this cheap simple teaching that i gave on spirit soul body soul is nothing else but your mind it's your mind the bible talks about heart 
the bible talks about mind and the bible talks about soul and all these three words are interchangeable whether it's in the old testament or it's in the new testament are you with me it is interchangeable now if you remove this word soul and put mind now read it i wish above all things beloved that you would prosper and be in health even as your mind prospers are you with me now soul which is mind is the place where it's a seat of the intellect mind is the place now somebody said emotion somebody said intellect somebody said thoughts what did somebody else say will somebody said emotions by the way where are all these happening it's in the mind come on guys where is your will it's in the mind where is your emotion it's in the come on guys anybody's emotion is in the stomach come on guys talk to me please it's all in the mind right and that's why the bible does give a lot of emphasis to take care of the mind and why do we not actually make progress in our life why don't we actually tap into that word that you may prosper in all that you may be healthy you may be in divine health is simply because we have ignored the soul that should be prospering the mind that is supposed to be prospering that's what the bible says there is always continuous re- renewal of the mind not the removal of the mind but renewal of the mind come on guys are you with me because the soul or the mind that is just there it is neglected it is not taken care of and here it is very simple you want prosperity you want health you want to be successful you want to be uh, things that you you you're plowing into or sowing into you want to find success then he says what do one thing make sure your mind is renewed hallelujah i'll give you one more Go to Proverbs chapter twenty-three, verse number seven. The A part. Proverbs twenty-three, verse number seven. Proverbs twenty-three, verse number seven. Proverbs twenty-three, verse number seven. See what he says. A part. Just as a man thinks, so is he. Let's read one more time. He says, "Just as a man thinks, so is he." That's how he behaves. Can you tell me anybody here sitting in this room his and his his hands or her hands get angry please talk to me guys talk to me anybody here who seated here who, whose legs get angry come on yeah anybody here i would like to meet that guy super genius super human being anybody here no but when does your hand move in anger because it is a thoughts the thoughts are not the thoughts are not in a hand it's not anywhere else it is here so as you think if you're thinking anger it will reflect where with the actions either with hands or with mouth sometimes it is in the eyes more than enough eyes is more than enough but for the eye to behave that way for the eye to react that way or to eye to do what it's supposed to be doing where it gets a signal from it gets a signal from where from the mind that's why he says just as he thinks so is he hallelujah is that correct church i'll give you one more example jesus said whatever is there in the treasure house or the storehouse of the heart the mouth will speak is he talking about that heart that is heart duk 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 the red one inside pumping he is not talking about the heart it is interchange it's the mind whatever is in the storehouse of the heart the mouth speak so if there is good treasure the mouth will speak good treasure if the storehouse is bad and is corrupt with inside corrupted thing the corrupt things will come it's the same thing what is he talking about if your mind is filled with good things the mouth is going to release the same thing so just as the way man thinks so shall his ways be i'll give you one more so far so good all okay go to proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 
Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4 verse number 23. So is it so important to take care of our thoughts? It is so very important to take care of our minds. It is so very important that we renew our mind every single day. And it's the word of God that renews. It's the word of God that changes our mind. Are you with me? 423. Anybody knows this word by heart? Don't look on the screen. Look at my face. Anybody knows this word by heart? Before you go to sleep, make sure you by heart this scripture. What do you say? He says, guard your heart. Take care of your heart. Watch out for your heart with all diligence. That means take care of it. Make effort to guard it. Make effort that you are watching. He doesn't say, uh, uh, ask a pastor, ask a dad to watch over your heart. No, no, no. He says what? You take care of your heart. For out of it are what? Issues of life. Is that what it says in the Bible? Yeah. Can I read you an amazing version? Please pay attention. It's a very beautiful version. And pay attention to this. Please let it enter into your spirit, man. The same scripture. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it flow the issues of life. Please be, 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 be alert to this scripture. See what he says. Verse 23. Be careful what you think. Be careful what you think. Because your, th- your thoughts run your life. He says, be careful what you're thinking. See, when you're thinking, it automatically turns into words. Your mouth is not angry on its own, by the way. If you say hands are not angry on its own, legs are not angry on its own, ears are not angry on its own, eyes are not angry on its own. So is your mouth not angry on its own. It needs thoughts and it is formed and then it comes out. Whatever is in the storehouse, mouth will speak. It is not the other way around. What did you say? What goes inside the mouth does not defile. What comes out defiles. So what is inside in the mind comes out. It's not the other way around. See what he says. He says watch out for your thought life. Watch out what are you thinking. Because it's a thought that run your life. What, a, what an amazing version that is. New century version. NCV. It is so apt for us. Now all these scriptures, it's, I'm just laying the foundation as far as our soul is concerned. As far as mind is concerned. We need to watch out how we are taking care, nurturing, guarding, guiding, taking care and are protective of our mind. Guard your heart with all in Take the Bible and put it here. Guard with all your heart. No, listen, sir, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about this, taking it here. Come on, guys. I've seen some people. I went to somebody's house for deliverance and they kept the Bible next to the pillow. Demon is going out. I wonder what type of demon is going out. Keep the Bible under the pillow. Be demon run away. And the demon began to speak. I'm talking real. I've seen that. Pastor, don't worry, brother. At that time, I was not a pastor. I was just a young guy. 20, 21 year old. And I said, Pastor, that is, brother, please don't go. You sleep here tonight. This demon is troubling. Whole night we were awake there. And then there's, no, keep the Bible there near the pillow. It doesn't work that way. The Bible needs to be inside of you. It will work. Come on, guys. This word needs to be inside of you. That's what it works. That's how it works in that place. By keeping the Bible under the pillow, headache does not go. Come on, guys. When you are fearful, you want the bed, the, the, the Bible next to be uh, under uh, near your, your, your side table. Anything happens, touch it. No, it doesn't work that way. The Bible needs to come and stay inside of us. In your mind. Are you with me, church? When your mind prospers, everything about you will start to prosper. When your mind prospers, you will stay in health. Not just physical, but every area of your life. Are you with me, church? The theme for tonight I want to talk about is a winning mind. How do you have a winning mind? What does the Bible talk about winning mind? Why the Bible pays so much of importance to soul? Why does the Bible pay so much importance to winning? uh, So much importance to mind? May I ask you to turn your Bibles to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 14. 
See what God thinks about a winning mind. See what God is thinking about you. What is God thinking about me at this point in time? Let's get that thing correct. If you're talking about having a winning mind, not just a willing mind, but a winning mind. I'm going to just stay on this word winning mind. See what he says. Now, thanks be unto God who causes, he says, which causes us to do what? Triumph. In Christ. Is that what it says in the Bible? So, as far as the will of the Lord is, as far as God, as far as God is concerned, the Bible says it is God who causes us to win. What is triumph, by the way? Is to win, right? Is to overcome. As far as the will of God is concerned, he says it is, he says, what he says what? It is, thanks be to God who always, I like that word always, not once in a while. When it comes to his will, he always wants us to be triumphant. Come on guys, are you with me? Does that settle it? That settles it. That as far as God is concerned, his will for us is what? He wants us to triumph. It is he who causes us. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. See the Bible says, Know you not, there are many who are partaking in a race. There are many who partake in a running competition. There are many who are there on the athletic field or on marathon, whatever. They are in a race. But there is only one who receives the prize. There's only one who obtains the prize. Hallelujah. Last verse. Then I will talk about something else. Last verse. Did he blow it? Ah, no, you're not. That all run in a race. But there is only one. Receive it. Then he says, run in such a way that you would be that one. Correct? Now go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5. He says, let this be mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, be like-minded like Jesus. Did Jesus have a winning mind? Oh, yes. Even on the cross, he had a winning mind. Even on the cross, he had a winning mind. He did not lose his mind as far as winning is concerned. The same verse, another version says, have the attitude, the same attitude that was there in Christ. Have that word, have the mind in you is nothing else but attitude. Look at somebody say attitude. Attitude. Now, see what the, he says, all are partaking in a running race and there is only one who wins. Run in such a way that you would be winning. What is the definition of win? God concept causes us to win. God causes us to be triumphant. Fine. And he says, you're in a running race and only one obtains the prize. Run in such a way that you win the prize. You are the one who gets the crown. And then here he says, what? Be like-minded like Jesus. So what do you mean by win? Reaching a goal? Success? To be determined, okay? What did he say? Victory? Victory and what else? What else? What is win? Huh? To have a good fight? Fantastic. Just to have a good fight? To have a good fight and you're knocked down? Is that okay? Oh, he gave a good fight. Pakyao gave a good fight last time, but he still lost the mass. And he got walked back out. He gave a good fight, but he got knocked out. He didn't win. So he had a good fight. Is that what he's talking about? Winning. I'm talking about winning, not just good fight. Somebody said something loudly. Huh? Say loud, no problem. No answer is wrong. No answer is wrong. You passed. <laughs> what is it? To conquer. Fantastic. What else? How many of you think winning means coming first? No, my answer my question. How many of you think winning means coming first? It's a very tricky question. Imagine all of us are running and everybody wants to come first. It's not talking about coming first among ourselves. 
Let's get that straight. Winning is not beating down my brother and coming first. Winning is not coming first. The win that is talking about is triumphing. Are you with me? It's 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 a noun that it says that God wants us to be victorious. God wants us to be overcomers. God wants us to be success. That's what it means to win, to be successful. That's why it says, by the way, did Jesus come first? Against whom? Did he have a competitor? Come on, please talk to me. I want you to be very practical with me. Because I want you to understand, Jesus was running the race. By the way, whom was he running with? Did he have a competitor? No, he didn't have a competitor. Please don't even get into your mind that devil was a competitor. For Jesus, devil is not a competitor. He's not a competition. If somebody told you that devil, Jesus, that God is competing the, the devil, it's a lie of the enemy. Are you with me? Devil is at the disposable at, at, at the disposable disposal at of God. Hey, get up, get up, go, 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 get up. He is at his disposal, by the way. God never looks at devil as his, he has no competition. We sing the song, he has no rival and he has no equal. There is no rivalry. So Jesus did not have to run the race to beat him or come first. No, no, no. He didn't have a competitor. But did he overcome? That's what he's talking about, winning. In the same way, in the church, among our brethren, among Christians, there is, I am better than you, I am coming first. No, 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 no. Come on, church, am I making some sense? I better, I pray six hours, you pray only six minutes. I am better than I am coming first. It's not talking about that. Oh, I know more scriptures. You know, when I am praying, I quote uh, uh, 24 scriptures in one shot, in five minutes prayer. I am better than you. I am coming first. No, it's not that. Please don't understand. Misunderstand that winning is beating somebody else in the church and coming first. Winning is overcoming. Winning is being victorious. Winning where God says it is God who causes us to be triumphant. Hallelujah. Is that okay? What is winning by the way? A little more. Does anybody know what is Proverbs 28 verse 1? If you didn't know, you know it tonight. And you will not forget it for the rest of your life. And he makes sure you don't forget it. Proverbs 28 verse 1. He says, a wicked man, his heart is always pounding, even though no man is chasing after him. A wicked man, his heart is always fretful, he's fearful, even though nobody is chasing after him. A criminal, he says, he says what? Even if nobody is pursuing him, he's fearful. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. <laughs> Please tell me, why didn't Jesus use, uh, why didn't God use, why didn't the word of God say, the righteous are as bold as a sheep? Why? Why did God use a lion? There is a reason behind why God uses two animals where he identifies himself with those two animals. God identifies himself with two animals in the scripture and both the animals are kings in their domain in their kingdom they are their kings one is written here lion he's the king of the jungle and there's another animal that God relates himself to what do you think it is huh lamb Huh? What do you say? Hmm? No, no, a gentle. So, lamb? Lamb? I told you it's a tricky question. I told you both the animals are kings in their own respective domain. Is a lamb a king in his domain? No. Is a lamb Neither is a sheep. In the bird kingdom, who's the king? It's an eagle. Come on, guys. It's an eagle that is the king in the king's domain, in, in, the, in the bird's domain, in that kingdom. It's number one. But here, let's look at lion at this point in time. Answer the simple questions. Answer the simple questions. We'll wind up after this. Simple question. I told you, I'm just laying the foundation. I'm just playing with you guys tonight. Are you, are you there with me? Yeah? I know I'm scattered a bit on purpose. If you make biryani on the, uh, in, the, uh, in the kitchen, on the counter, the whole counter is messed up, right? 
but wait for everything to come together don't come to a conclusion look at seven don't come jump to conclusions yet <laughs> when you preparing that everything is messy but when they all come together blend wait for the whole finished product you may think i'm everywhere hold a minute don't come don't just jump to it what is happening here i'll i'll come to you by the way is the lion the largest animal in the animal kingdom who's the largest one an elephant sorry no i'm talking about something that is alive that is there that you can see. yeah somebody said dinosaur <laughs> we'll forgive you because i believe you're from dinosaur age so it's okay <laughs> we forgive you wait it's a privilege please give me an autograph afterwards that you're from dinosaur kingdom at least i can say i know somebody from dinosaur age somebody sitting in my church and uh, he or she is the talk of the town dino listen we'll make you famous don't worry <coughs> so he is not the largest next is he the tallest animal who's the tallest one thank you is he the heaviest animal who's the heaviest one Is he the fastest animal? Who's the fastest animal? Is he the smartest animal? Who's the smartest one? Bola, what did you say? Monkey? Fox? Just because I'm a pastor... So I'm going to stick to the word of God. He says be harmless as a dove, but be wise as a who? It's generally agreed, it's generally uh, 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 known fact that hyenas are smarter than 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 the lion. They're the smartest ones. They're very intelligent. But leave us out on hyenas. I'll take I'll stick to the word of God. He says be harmless as a dove but be wise as a serpent so is the is is the lion the smartest in the jungle you all the boxes i asked you you all tick no 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 yet god identifies himself with the lion there could be a reason right there has to be a reason that god does not look at the largest and oh that's why i want to identify myself with oh I, i'm this guy is the heaviest oh i want to identify with him oh this guy is the fastest man he's so quick after no this one is the smartest no 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 none of this if you want to compare it with the lion all the check boxes are a no yet he is the king of the jungle there has to be a reason why he's fearless yes there has to be a reason why even though he's not the largest not the heaviest he's not the toughest he's not ss ss all the s yet he rules when a lion walks in and there is a herd of elephants everybody just gives way sir please go if the lion is on the pro is moving around every other animal will look for the quick escape move aside are they fearful they are respectful Look at this guy. When he sees the largest one, pick up the largest animal. Elephant, no brainer. We had some smart ones in Dubai. They said African elephant. <laughs> so okay, we'll take the African elephant. We'll take the African elephant. Big fellow, big ears and all that stuff. Every time the animal, every time the 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 lion sees the elephant there is something that is going across his mind there is some what did he say he saying that's my lunch that's my next meal he is going to sustain me and he's going to sustain my cubs he's going to sustain my family and he's going to be for a season when he's looking at it he just man i'm just going to, i'm just going to lick you up right now i'm just going to bite into you by the way can you tell me the size of the stomach of an elephant and compare it with the size and the stomach of an ele- uh, 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 size and the stomach of a lion compared to the size and stomach of an elephant who stands a chance here yet he has got a small stomach but look at his head i can swallow you 
I'm going to beat, I'm going to eat into you. You are my next meal. You're coming, you're a steak right on my table. You know why? Because he has the attitude. Because his mindset says, you're my meal. I look forward to you to be on my dinner table. That's the mindset. When he walks, have you seen any time a lion walking with his tail inside and he's walking like that? You got, what? It's the attitude. He's not the smartest, you told me. He's not the fastest, you told me. He's not the largest, you told me. He's not the tallest, you told me. He's not the quickest. He's not, not, not. Yet the Bible says when he is on the move, everybody moves away. It's a winning mindset because of the attitude that he carries. The attitude, what feeds the attitude is the belief system. I believe I can swallow this guy. Is he looking at his stomach? No, Baba, that is too much to man. I cannot, I, he cannot fit me here. No, he believes that big guy can fit here. Why? That's his belief system. Hold a minute. Clap afterwards. Clap afterwards. I'll tell you. Let's reverse it. Let's reverse it. When the elephant looks at the lion, when the elephant now looks at the lion, Though he's the smallest, he's not the quickest, he's not the smartest, he's not the heaviest, he's not, not, not. But when he looks at the lion, he looks at me, oh my gosh, the eater has come. Oh, better I run from here. Oh, this guy is going to bite into me. The first thing that comes to his mind, I need to escape. He's not looking at his eyes. Listen, how long will it take for the, for the, for the, for, for the elephant to finish off the lion? One stamp, finish, it's over. He'll gush out from everywhere. Every place, everything will come out. Come on guys, talk to me. One kick, one stamp and he's finished. But yet he doesn't have that. Because he believes, I'm going to be on his dinner table. Because that's the mindset. Are you with me church? That's why I said, there is an anointing available for healing of the mind here tonight. Where your mind thinks like a lion. What do you say? The righteous are as bold as a lion. That means God is asking us. He says what? The righteous have an attitude like a lion. Even if the odds are against him. The size, weight, whatever, whatever. He's like, but he still walks. I, can, I, I think I can swallow this. Listen. It does not matter the size of the challenge. May I ask you a question? Do you have a stomach for the elephant? Have you come across someone say, I'm so hungry I can go through a lion, uh, I can go through an elephant today. Listen, pray that God would give you that kind of mindset. That God would give you a, that kind of mindset. Are you ready to pray, church? The righteous are as bold as a lion. Pray, God, before I leave this room. Listen, the, sto <clears throat> the story of Jacob, I did not finish last week. I did not touch it yet. He was running away, running throughout his life because he was messed up in his life. But he said, I need to go back to my place because the promise was there that I go back and I need to claim that promise. And he made his road back to his brother's house. But on his way, he was fearful. And then the Bible says what? He sent some servants. He sent gifts for them. Then the Bible says next day, he took his wives and the 11 sons. And you said, at least by the time you go, he'll cool down. He'll be like, you know, he'll receive me. And the Bible says he came to a place he was alone. And there the Bible says he had an encounter with the angel of God and they wrestled the whole night. And the Bible says, the angel of God, please let me go. I want to go. I want to go. Please, it's break of day. What do you say? Unless you bless me. He came to a point of desperation and the desperation led him to be so determined. God, I refuse to let you go unless you bless me. There was not just desperation. He was desperate all along. But he saw his moment that, that desperation get turned into determination. And what he said, unless you bless me, I refuse to let you go. You bless me now. I want you to pray with that kind of desperation tonight. I want you to pray with that kind of determination. God, I do not want to leave this room unless you touch me. Then I want to have a winning mindset. 
Listen, this thing, please don't put it on the walls of your house. Put a lion picture. Put your picture there. Righteous are as bold as a lion. We will take this scripture, take all the African safari guys, big fellow, all that stuff, big all that, and righteous are as bold. No, no, no. You put your name. In that, in the, listen, I won't be surprised if you, it's not, listen, even if you do this, I'm, I won't say you're crazy. You got to be crazy for the Lord. The righteous into bracket, you put Josiah, is bold as a lion. In that place, you said, the righteous put into bracket, because bold as a lion. Listen, this is not given for the, oh, amen. Listen, church. This is not a feel good message, a feel good word. It is an invitation to live that word. Let's arise and pray. Let's arise and pray. Let's arise and pray. Let's arise and pray. I know that I know that most of the people, majority of the people in this room have mental torment. In some way or the other, some area or the other, there is, all, there is a mental torment. You go through mental pressure. Sometimes you may, be, you may be financially very strong, but you have an issue where you are physically, you have a mental torment and you say, I cannot handle it anymore. You could be strong in one area, but there will be a other secret part of your life that you are actually having a mental torture. Listen church, I want to encourage you, key into this word this season of a winning mind. Not just a winning mindset, it's a winning mind. I want you to key into it and say, God, I, I want to receive this anointing. I want to receive this healing anointing. This healing anointing, I believe it is here by the reason of the word that has been released. Pray, God, I want my mind to be healed. He says what? Everything about you will begin to prosper. Everything about you shall begin to be in divine health. Even as your soul, even as your mind, even as your intellect prospers. It's the area where our intellect is sitting. It is where the, 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 the mind is where the thinking process is happening. The mind is where the reasoning is happening. That's where God is wanting us to enter. That's where God wants to enter and have an influence. That's where the spirit of God wants to enter and have an influence. Is our mind. Pray, this is a moment to be delivered from mental torture. Anybody sick of it? Then you're going to say, God, I want to be delivered. I want to be set free. I want to be set free from every kind of mental torture. Whether it's in my workplace, whether it's in my marriage, whether it's in my in my house, it's whether it's in my relationship, whether it's in my fa- in, in, in my family, whether it's in my in my finances, whether it's in my health, whether it's in my workplace. People go to work, they have good jobs, but the heart is pounding, mind is tortured. Whether I have the job today or not, today or not, today or not, today or not. Oh, how is my boss going to react? How is my supervisor going to react? Oh, what is going to be my prison? Oh, what is going to be the result? Oh, how is it going to be this month? Oh, how the sales going to go? Oh. How will I be able to pay the fees of my children? Oh, how will it be with my wife? How will it be with my wife's health? How will it be with my husband's health? It's mental torture. Pray, ask God for grace that you would have an attitude of a lion. You may not be the fastest in the church, you may not be the fastest in the kingdom of God, you may not be having a lot of muscle power. Not just physical muscle power. You may not be someone who is a heavy bout uh, muscle power financially. You may not be the richest. You may not be the tallest. You may not be the person who has the highest link and the biggest link. You may not have the east in your life. Does not matter. You look at the lion. He has an attitude. He said, have an attitude. The attitude that was there in Christ Jesus. The real lion of Judah. The real lion of Judah. He said, have the attitude of the lion. Have the attitude, the same spirit that Jesus had, the same mindset. Pray and ask God for grace. God, I want you to heal me tonight. Pray, God, I'm keying into to the healing anointing that is available. God, I want your anointing. I want you to touch me. I want, I receive this anointing of God. I receive this healing anointing that is going to, Lord, set my mind Set my mind 
set my mind at peace set my mind to be a winning mind oh god para sehero do holare shikala bara ma i give you praise i give you praise pray 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 it's just the foundation that i've laid this week please i would urge you do not miss the service next friday do not miss the service next friday it is just the foundation that i've laid tonight package your tithes and offering <laughs>